Hey folks, Quilly King here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. It's the experimental version of Build 1.2, and look, that moon probe that we sent, but with um, not enough uh, solar panels pointed everywhere, so it wasn't able to keep up the charge, is still in an orbit around Kerbin, which is interesting. It might at some point intersect um, the moon or Minmus again somewhere, uh, and if it does so, although it, you know, it's not on an equatorial path, so the odds of actually doing that are a little lower. But if it does, it might get slung shot. Slung shot, yes. Slung shotted, I don't know. Um, out of the uh, the current system, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that right now. What we are going to worry about is getting Valentina to Minmus. So, Minmus is over there, and very much like uh, doing a moonshot, you are going to start burning basically as Minmus starts to rise up. But I have a hard time actually spotting Minmus in this guy consistently, so I will definitely be using Maneuver for this. This is almost certainly not exactly the ideal spot. Uh, let's bring it out to... There was an intersection there, but not where we want I want to bring it to close to the Minmus orbit over here. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we are going to hide the Omnet network temporarily. And I'm going to grab this. Actually, there we go. There you are. And swing it so that it's a little bit closer over here. Now we can see the closest approach. Now we're not going to be quite on the right inclination here. <clears throat> hmm. Still, can we get that timed out a little bit better? Maybe we should actually fix our inclination first. That will make our life a lot easier. Although it will require a little bit less of an efficient burn. That's not really going to be a good way to do it. I mean, technically we can encounter there, but it's hardly the kind of thing we want. Where is it? Uh, no, it's very much not. And that's a lot of delta B over here at this point. So first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to um, see if we can't fix our inclination. So here's our descending node. At this point, if we look back to the plane that Minmus is going through, that's the moon, Minmus is over here, right? You can see at this point, we are crossing effectively downwards through that node. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift things over here so that we are going to be going, I believe that is the normal one, upward, effectively. Come on. Got that? I suppose I could plan the maneuver. It's probably a really good idea. So at this descending node, Add a maneuver, and maybe I was wrong about which side, 5.5, 4.7, and then when it starts to move like that, you can adjust your timing so it's just a little bit more centered there. Okay, that's basically, oh, that is hard to, I mean, I'm not going to be firing with that kind of accuracy anyway. So now we will be within one degree of inclination. And really what I should do is pair this as well with our burn. Uh, but I don't want to burn from here anyway. So it's moot point. Okay, so we're going to do this first. It would be nice if we could have launched with the right degree of inclination, but it was not to be. So we're just going to orientate ourselves to the maneuver node. And we're going to get there in two minutes. I don't expect this to be a very long burn. Our thrust to weight should be pretty good. I, I'm thinking it's probably no more than 20 seconds. If it's even 20 seconds, I'll be quite surprised. Let me go and just fast forward a wee bit to get us a little bit closer here. Do, 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 do. One, as soon as we light our engines, we'll get a, a better estimated burn time. There's some great mods to keep that. Oh, that's way overshooting it. Yeah, I overshot that. But I... I don't even need the, uh, the maneuver anymore. Just keep pointing normal or anti-normal, whatever that one is, and we'll just keep an eye on our definition. Yeah, we're not burning at exactly the right place, so it's not a very efficient one, but we don't know, we don't have to go right to zero degrees. There. Even something like that will make it a lot easier for us to encounter, because now our orbit is tilted mostly the same as Minmus's orbit is. So now again, if we go here and we're going to start to burn somewhere around here, it should be a lot easier intersect. This is the only difficulty with the Minmus encounter. Is that Minmus? That's the moon. The only difficulty with the Minmus encounter is the fact that there's a slight inclination difference. That's interesting. We can get a lunar slingshot somewhere around here. Which makes sense. Eh, uh, I mean... Sorta. Of. I don't think it's worth really messing around with. Okay, ignore it. <clears throat> there's an encounter. I'm just gonna pull back, and then... Whoa! Apparently the swirling was way too serious there. 
that's interesting. Oh, that's right, because of the way it works, scrolling down is a small change, scrolling up is a big one. So if we scroll down from here, I don't know. I just want like the minimum possible burn for this, but I guess it's all pretty damn close. And scroll down over here, there. <clears throat> so there's an encounter. Now, as soon as you've got it, <clears throat> excuse me, what I like to do is focus my actual target, uh, and then find my node again, which is actually going to be damn annoying. There it is. And then see if... There we go. I can tweak it to be as close as possible. This is such a minute difference in the burn. That's going to be close enough, and then partway there we'll do another inclination change so we can come in a little bit more equatorial. So, big question is, does this stage have the sort of fuel we need to inject ourselves into min missile? And I hope it does. I think it does. We'll see how it goes. So before we do a time warp, we go ahead and quick save. And actually, you know what? I should use the uh, center on myself. Just click past the maneuver and say warp next maneuver. It'll stop with one minute to go. That's going to be a lot safer than having me do it manually. Um, although I won't have very long for to reorientate myself to the maneuver. Maybe I'll stop a little bit sooner than that. I think nor with this, it stops with one minute to go. By default, if you have the alarm clock mod, the default time is uh, three minutes before. There we go. So that gives me a tiny bit more time for me to make sure I'm facing the right way. It's mostly just a pro-get grade burn. It's just the fact that pro-grade is going to switch a little bit partway through the maneuver. I'm going to start at about T minus 50 seconds. Yeah, right around. That looks pretty good. Get that going there, and mostly what I'm going to do, because, you know, my, my start of this burn and my aim is not necessarily 100% precise, mostly what I'm doing here is using this as sort of like a preview about how long I, I expect this to go. I should have started it a little sooner. Um, but mostly I'm going to be looking for my real orbit in this encounter. In fact, when we start to get close, what I'll do is just cancel the maneuver to clean up the board completely and just keep the burn going until we get an encounter with the miss whatsoever. And then again, I'll do the zoom and fine tune. Which actually makes the, the initial zoom and fine tune maybe a little uh, pointless. You know what? Our burn our time is actually, I think it started at just about the right time. Because you want to do, ideally, you know, in a perfect world where you had infinite thrust power, you would want to do, you would want to dump your entire delta V. Delta V is change in velocity. You'd want to do your entire change in velocity exactly at the node. But since we can't literally have infinity thrust, what you do is you want to get half your thrust before and half of it after. I'm just going to lock the prograde now just so that I don't accidentally fiddle something inappropriately here. Okay, now I'm going to slow down the burn. Because these have huge change at this point. There's our encounter is close, but we're not actually having it here. And I think the best way to correct that will be to do a bit of a radial or anti-radial. I'm not sure which one it will be. There we go. Pull that back. Just try to delicately... There we go. That will get us an encounter. Although, again, you know, we're using a little bit more fuel than I would like, actually. Quite a bit more. Uh, oops. Go to stability assist. And we're going to start to burn with nine seconds left. There we go. Or not nine seconds left. Oh, it's probably using... Oops. My burn time from before. And I think what I'm going to do here is actually ignore my maneuver for a second. We'll go back to a prograde burn. There, there's an encounter. All right, altogether, not really satisfactory at all. We're going to want a little bit more prograde here, though. Oh, there's the path that the, they want that satellite contract. So what I want to do at this point is just bring the periapsis a little closer, not all the way because we're still going to have to do a bit of an inclination change. So we're going to want to wait till that's done to do the fine tuning. But it's not it's not too bad. Um, oh, yeah, we're warping over this way. I want to warp to about halfway, and that'll be a good place to make the inclination change. What I'll do now is I'll cancel it at this point. And I want to set up a maneuver here but I want to focus on Minmus. Click here. 
Yeah, we're trying to come in more equatorial pinment. That looks about right. And then I want to get a little bit closer up. That is pretty happy. Now that is a very minuscule burn. Um, so two things I'm going to do. First of all, uh, well, I guess I have to derate both engines simultaneously. It's a little annoying. Try that and 7%. There we go. So that's that. Center back on myself. Make sure we're clicking on the correct line over here for next maneuver. Even at 7%, this is going to be an incredibly short burn. And at distances involved here, a tiny little change in overall thrust has a huge impact. Um, the actual time is slightly less. I mean, far distances, a, a small change has a huge effect in the end, but I don't think the actual timing is as critical, since I don't have an actual burn time. But I will set in this direction. And we're just basically going to do this a very, very slow burn. And again, what I'm going to do is focus on the moon. One minute. Oh, uh, sorry, man, this is over here. Focus the view over here. I'm just going to start with one degree of shift. There we go, a little bit more. I'm not looking at the maneuver so much, because again, my timing might be slightly off. It's the end result I care about mostly. Do this. Let's just adjust the maneuver a little bit here. Because what the maneuver is trying to achieve is a final direction vector and velocity. That matches what I set up, but because I didn't start to burn at exactly the same time, um, completing the maneuver like this, see? I completed the maneuver here. So I'm ending up with the velocity and direction that the maneuver called for, but because the timing is off, I'm ending up in a slightly different place, but if I burn just a little longer, and I mean, ultimately, any of that, I was perfectly happy with. So there we go. So we're going to end up there. Hopefully we've got plenty of fuel. I don't have no fucking idea. No fucking idea. But the gravity of Minmus is low. It's very easy to do. Um, to do landings there. Big question will be our return. But hey, at least we don't have any, um, um, any life support to worry about. Because this is vanilla with no mods. Cross our fingers. All right, fast forwarding to the encounter with Minmus over here. And it'll de warp itself, but I'm going to go right back up to times a thousand is pretty safe, and then it'll automatically go down to times 50 as it does its crossing. Like that. It'll do the crossover. Wait, 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 wait. Kill all the warp. And we're still happy with everything yet. Because, because of floating point numbers and things like that, um, you can end up with slight inaccuracies when you cross over, especially at speeds. Although, they did really remove a lot of the old jitter. They've done a much, uh, no, 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 retrograde, much better great, a job in 1.2 to remove some of the, the funky behavior that just happens in computers when it comes to floating point numbers, like decimal point numbers, basically. All right, so that's basically the maneuver. 193 delta V is not very much at all. I'm about to do another time warp, so what I should do is quick save. Then I should make sure I'm positioned the right way around. There's the maneuver node there. And what I want to do is click past it and say warp to next maneuver. Made a burn. Two minutes. Oh, that? Hang on. Kill, 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 kill the warp. Um, kill, kill, kill the warp. That is accurate for the thrust that is currently there, but that's not what I want at all. I want 100% thrust limit, uh, which means that time is no longer accurate, but almost certainly... And I mean, I guess we could do the math with 7% thrust, but most likely it's going to be a 5 to 10 second thrust, and that's going to be it. Okay, next maneuver, let's restart that. As far as I know, oh, um, what we don't have, hold on, is... Right, no, I only brought one goo canister, never mind. I was going to say, we don't have the goo info from uh, high space, near space, or the ground, but we only brought the one goo canister to try to save a little bit on weight here. Which I'm happy we did, because really, we are going to have... A little bit. We're going to be a little bit limited in our Delta V here. Mostly because of inefficiencies in my launch, followed by... Well, my launch in general, my gravity turn wasn't good, but it also would have been great. I could have um, planned our takeoff such that I could have taken off into the inclination plane of Minmus to start off with, therefore saved us the trouble of having to do the normal, anti-normal type stuff. All right, we are nearly there. And again, I think this is going to be a very short burn. I'm going to just give it a little quick start. Yeah, yeah going to be microscopic, so just going to be impatient, time warp, go and go for the finishing touch on this burn, 
Well, don't let retrograde, it's fine. There you go. Good enough. All right, how much we got left in the tank? Half of our fuel is left. Oh, this is going to be dicey. All right, so it doesn't matter which side I land on. It is much more convenient to land when the um, when the sun is up because you can see your shadow. And in fact, if I go and start hitting the brakes here, I would very much like to land in one of these flats. Like that. I think that's what I'm going to do for now. That's going to be okay. Um, I'll lock to retrograde because there'll be some of that, but not much. And again, the gravity here is so incredibly low. I think the, the time warp, the auto time warp, will stop at some point here. Now, I don't have access to any curb net here, which is interesting. If I did have a probe core, I could, which would give me that altitude above the ground. On the other hand, I can take a look at the internal view and get right over here is the radar altitude. So uh, you need to get within 3,000 kilometers of the surface for the radar altimeter to kick in. So we will very slowly get pulled down by the force of gravity here on Minmus. Very, very, very slowly. All right. Go and counter our speed a little bit. And can I just hit Z? Yeah, there we go. We're still not within 3,000 feet. Um, I thought there was something else I wanted to do. I guess it probably would not be a terrible idea to just kill a little bit more of our horizontal. So what you do here is we're trying to push our retrograde marker towards the top. Push retrograde. This, this in particular is very handy when you're doing um, docking rendezvous. It's always, oh, no, I went too far. Misinterpreted some of the symbols here. So hit that dot in the middle of the yellow. There we go. Or not the dot. No, the cross line. What the hell is the dot? See, there's like a little circle. Huh. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so I'll lock to the retrograde, but then go stability assist. And if we take a look. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't hit the wrong key there. I wanted to see. There we go. We're 1,500 meters above the surface. And at some point, we should be able to see our shadow. There it is over there. And our speed is very low. Oh, yeah. I cannot walk faster than that. In fact, I slowed us down too much, which is a slight waste of fuel. Again, the optimal way of doing it is a suicide burn where you time your thrust, so you go to full thrust in such a way that the second you touch the ground is also the second your vertical speed would hit zero. So we waste a little bit of fuel doing that. Um, but it does not take much. It takes very little fuel. I don't remember. It's like 150 delta V or something like that to re-enter orbit of Minmus. And then it takes very little for you to escape Minmus. And then getting back to Kerbin is usually pretty easy. Just thrust me up a little bit here. Trying to, oh, yeah, that, that funny thing, when you get low enough... Oh, I think we're going upwards. Uh, when you get low enough, the, the shadow mode sort of resets. You lose it for a second there. We're definitely having some sideways drift, which on Minmus can be a little bit funny, because you are very light, effectively, right? Your weight is very light because of the gravity, um, which means, you know, you don't have to worry about hitting the ground that hard. Oh, no, it's just... It's not a... It's the funny shadow is because of the... Um, the clipping through some of the uh, the polygons here. There we go. And then it should... I, I've worked enough with shadows in 3D programs, in Unity in particular, which is what um, this is made in. And, you know, like, some of the funny behaviors, stuff called biasing and whatever. There you go. Okay, we're just doing sideways certainly a lot faster than I would prefer, but it should be okay. Especially if we land very... But because of the low gravity is what I was going to say, it, it's possible we'll go skating sideways a fair bit. We are landing on ice after all. There we are, turn off the SAS, and there, we have landed. This is our first living Kerbal to land on a foreign body. Mmm, I can smell the mint coming through the, air, the uh, airlock here, it's quite interesting. So, let's do some preliminary tests before we venture outside. We'll observe the materials bay. While the material samples you process, uh, while the material samples were processed, sorry, you began to turn your thoughts to how much Minmus looks like a mint dessert. You've discovered that you are now hungry. 125 science from that. That is like almost more science than we've done this entire thing. I mean, our double flyby of Minmus and the Moon with lots of experiments run came back with what, two or three hundred science? Um, so this is going to be just almost as good as is. So we're observing the goo at Minmus's greater flats. Excellent. We're going to keep that experiment as well. And in the back, we're going to run the barometer and find out that there's probably no atmospheric pressure whatsoever here in the Minmus's greater flats. Often one of the places that most people land, the greater flat. It's very easy to land here on Minmus. So the low gravity and the incredible flat frame makes it a great target, even though the encounter is a little trickier. Check the uh, thermometer. 
collect and record temperature data from the environment to find out it's just exactly the right temperature to keep ice cream chilled for some reason. An odd coincidence. Now it's time for us to EVA. Now, I think they've fixed it. Yeah, it used to be like the EVA, which I forgot to do. We're going to have to do when we take off. Because that's science we haven't done. EVAing in space. Um, shit, I don't think we've even done it by Kerbin, so I'll try to remember that. Uh, it used to be if you were EVAing on attached to the ship, even if your ship had landed, a lot of times it would tell you EVA as if you were flying above it. So if they fix that, I feel like a bit of a superhero when you jump into gravity. We're going to find out about that in a second. Um, oh, before I do this, let me board get a crew report. Because we've got those from orbit, but not here. Board the crew set and assessment of the situation, so we're going to keep that. I will then EVA, and I don't think we need to worry about this, but just in case, I'm going to take the data and restore it just to reset the crew experiment. Um, and then, well, we've got to grab the science, but before we do that, I think we're just going to try to climb down. Whee! Super low gravity over here. Boing, 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 boing. And let me deploy the jetpack first, but I'm just going to jump here. Woo! That is a jump. It's not even the jetpack. There's some stability going on here. But look at that. Crazy. Oh, me miss how much I love you. What, what's with the angle here? It's a little weird. Okay, there we go. So that, that was great and very satisfying. Let's go and take our... Oh, I can't take samples. I gotta up late, upgrade the astronaut center. That's okay. We can do that in a moment. So let's go ahead and... Is this where we want to plant the flag? Yeah, I think I kind of like it. The ship's open. Ta-da! Oh, it's backwards! Um... So, I always like to flag these as the, the terrain. And then we can type something here. The site name is just Greater Flats. That way, I, I'll be able to tell from orbit what the biomes are. It's very easy to track some things. And we'll say, um, one giant leap for ice cream manufacturing. Manufacturing. Damn. There we are. Okay, so we're going to leave uh, Valentina here for a sec. We're going to flip back to the space center. Ooh, I should quick save first. Although crashing is a lot less of a problem when you're running 64-bit and no mods. So we have to upgrade this. No. Upgrade the science center. There we go. Now you can get surface samples. It's very expensive, but we have 1.3 million Kerbal bucks. We're going to spend about a third of that, I guess, um, upgrading this. So now we can take soil samples, which is good because we'll get even more science out of this. Let's switch over to Valentina. Could almost switch to the lander. By the way, if you haven't done it before, um, the square bracket lets you switch. So now we're on the lander. If it had a probe core, we could steer it at this point, but we don't. We can't. We can switch back to Valentina and say, hey, why not? you know what would be good? Grab us a scoop of that ice cream. The surface can, seems to consist of tiny crystal-like grains. Very pretty, but probably not edible. Oh, that's a disappointment. 150 science. And actually, if we came back again, we could get even more. Uh, can I do that twice in the same one? If I have bow... Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm over-enthusiastically... Grab, actually, while we're out here, let's grab the science from the science junior. Select data. Yes, remove the data. Can't restore it because we're not a scientist, but we can select the data, please. Which is important because these modules are not coming back to Kerbin with us. Now, I don't actually have to go and grab the science from the back. Although... Then we don't have to worry about those things burning up. I could have grabbed these from in space as well, which might have been easier, but that's okay. We're going to take all this data and then let go. Oh, no, it won't work. Okay. So what I was going to do is say, what I'm going to do is board, stores all the science in the pod. Uh, I didn't mean to switch to the space center. I meant to EVA again. Just wrong button. My bad. Sorry. Um, and then I was going to take another sample from the ground because we can get more science from taking another sample from exactly the same place. But because it's exactly the same sample, what it will do when I get back in the pod, it'll tell me, you already have one of these, you wanna just discard one. It's like, oh. So we could land here for some more science, but more interestingly, we'll probably land in a different biome. And in fact, we are very close to the biome right over there. And I'm a little worried about fuel. I could just walk over there and take a surface sample, but I think what I'm gonna do is risk it. Um, Maybe it's just a little. Good. Now. Go back. It really doesn't take very much at all. Which is good because we don't have very much.
stuff in this might be a little interesting. Rotate retrograde. Right now, that would include an up component. Hey, there's Kerbin and the moon. The mun. Oh, how exciting is that? We can land right up there. I would be extraordinarily happy. This set stability assist. Our, our primary concern is going to be and that'd be with an eye nav ball. Still all horizontal motion at exactly the right time. We may have to give a bit of a vertical boost here. Mm, so far, so good. Yeah, we're definitely, well, we're not moving down yet. As soon as the retrograde marker goes above the horizon, that means we start to drop. So I want to make sure I don't kill all the horizontal stuff and then end up flat on my side, which could happen here. No, we're fairly high up. Okay, now that I can see the shadow, I'm actually quite content with how things are going. I'm going to drift till I'm just above this little spot, then give a little spurt of gas to kill our horizontal motion. There you go. Now the retrograde has gone above the horizon. So now we are slowly going down. And anywhere here would be fine. I would just like to land on this as level as possible. But I also want to kill the horizontal well before I have to worry about our horizontal or vertical speed. Okay, this should be okay. And what we're doing is we're pushing the retrograde node to the top. Actually, that's not too far there. Down there. Okay, let's go upwards. That's pretty good. Just trying to push this upwards right on the dot. And then let me lock retrograde for a second. But then reset to normal SAS mode. And then. That should be fine. We can we can do an impact um, at a higher speed, but then there's a good chance we will bounce and that will not make us very happy. There we go. Did not use much fuel. Okay. A little rougher than we could have, but I was trying to avoid the extra set of fuel. So now we should be able to get another crew report. From the lowlands, excellent, 25 science. Um, we can we can run the barometer. Excellent. Grab that. We can run the thermometer. Grab that. And more importantly, I can EVA. And this will still be the Yeah. We get some information. It's the same information, same as on the ground. Um, I you don't get science from the flag, you get experience points, so I don't think there's any point in putting another flag here. Um, although we could mark the fact that we've come to the lowlands, we didn't do a full science of it. I will take the surface sample, which is worth a shy ton of science. And again, what I'll do is I'll take a moment to grab the stuff off the back here. And grab, and take, and take, and pop, 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 pop. Down, 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 down. See if we can do it. Grab. We're not getting flung into space here. They may have adjusted that too, which is nice. I'm going to take all this data, um, reset the crew report again, but otherwise we are good to go. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to take off, and ideally we want to take off eastwards because then we get to use the boost from Minmus's own orbit to make us happy. So we're going to turn on the SAS. I'm going to give one upwards toot so that we can at least get off the ground, and then we are going to go fully sideways. Just a little above the atmosphere or the horizon, make sure we don't smack anything. But this takeoff is going to be really nice for us. Whoa! Okay, well, look at our orbit is already huge, but it takes very, very little. Um, it's a little, that was a, actually a bit of a mistake though, because uh, really we wanted to do the minimum amount here, and then we want to burn around here such that we're burning prograde here, but escaping Minus in a retrograde fashion relative to Kerbin. Uh, we've got a moon encounter there. But I don't think that'll stick around. Um, and we want to be tangential over here. So 100 meters per second does that. And then what I'll do is I'll do an adjustment afterwards. Because as is, I'm, I'm not... Well, I mean, I guess it would be this combined with a little bit of that. And if I kept doing this, we'd be finding, like, the optimal vector somewhere in between here. But it's kind of fiddly. It is much more fuel efficient. What's the periapsis for Kerbin looking like right now? Uh, under half a million, which is quite nice. But again, I can go back to saying, oh, I want to 
do this, overshoot it a little bit, and then bring it down that way. But you see, again, we're getting a moon encounter, I think. Oh, maybe not. Actually, ooh, we're actually going into Kerbin here. So we actually are overshooting it. That's quite nice. So let me pull back that way. And this way, I think. All right, that's as close as I'm going to get here. Then I'll fiddle once I'm in proper orbit of Kerbin. It's going to be a lot easier to, to do. Right, I say that and then I keep fiddling. So close. Okay, you know what? Fuck okay. it. There's such microscopic changes now, I won't be able to make the maneuver properly anyway. So, we're going to face ourselves the correct way. Which is there. It'd be nice when we get maneuver locking here. Uh, we're going to go that way. So, I'm going to quick save before a big time warp. We're going to go warp the next maneuver. Yeah, it's going to be a very short burn. Because that is not a whole lot of delta V. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should actually, uh, I should have checked the contract. There might have been something new. There might still be. Let me cancel this for a second. Let me very quickly go to the Space Center. There are some mods that let you visit the uh, the contract screen from out in space, which is kind of handy. Um, space around Kerbin. Just the satellite. Okay, the space around Kerbin, we can do that very quickly. Because, besides from space around Kerbin, we have satellites that orbit Kerbin that have thermometers. So I can grab any one of them. And find the thermometer right over here, the log temperature, and we can transmit it. It's worth zero science, but it still satisfies the mission. It doesn't give us any science by itself, but it still, you know, keeps track of um, atmospheric temperature, find hot spots. Um, okay, nothing, nothing else actually that makes much of a difference uh, at this time. So, just sometimes you finish all this and you find out that you got another mission to get space stuff from around, I don't know, Minmus or something weird. Okay, so that's us. We're going to switch to here. And then we will again save before we time warp. Go and say warp next maneuver. Mostly facing the maneuver, which is nice. And there we go. That is going to be a ridiculously short burn. Let's try to face ourselves basically where we need to be. I'll wait to be right on top of the node, and of course we're going to burn right by it, because it takes too long to slow down now, let's hurry it up. Oh well, it's still mostly going to be there. I'll stop a little while first, make a readjustment. Um, that's actually really... Eh, it's not bad at all, actually. Our escape looked a little funny, but we're going to be 300,000 um, meters above the surface, which is nothing, especially this distance. So again, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, time warp, to escape the influence of Minimus. And then as soon as we do that, I'm just going to turn myself retrograde relative to Kerbin itself. And then it will really be easily be able to just drop. Okay, I'm just letting it times 50, make sure everything's settled down. Great. Just turn retrograde here. And just give it a little, just like one notch of shift. See, like, I'm at 1% or whatever one notch of shift is, which is nothing. And just bring this down. I could have done it even more optimally if I'd waited at the apoapsis. Honestly, I don't have a ton of fuel, so I could have, but like, this is so little. There we go. 26k is perfectly fine. We'd still have the uh, the fuel to make adjustments if we wanted to. I have gone and collected everything from these bits, which is good. I log pressure data up here. Yeah, we do get some. That's actually quite interesting. Um, temperature we had done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what was this? Space high above Kerbin. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, just keep it. That's fine. I'll EVA just for the sake of argument. Take the data, board. Uh, we may as well shrink our legs, not that it makes much of a difference. Nice little sound effect. I didn't realize it was there. So that's all there. We're gonna relieve that go. We've done we've done all the crew reports at this point. Um, and we did the temperature. Okay. What I'll tr oh, this is high about Kerbin. Ah, oh, that's right, shit. I forgot to do all the ones in Minmus space. Ah, oh, I got distracted by things. Like for example, the EVAs. We actually just left a shit ton of science behind. Well, I've done EVAs above Kerbin. Have I? I don't know. It was just the Minmus one I forgot. I'm such a jerk. Anyway, not much for us to do at this point. I'm going to quick save. I'm going to warp to here. Vroom! Like a week away. It's ridiculously far. But that's Minmus. It's very, very far away. 
as we get pulled in towards Kerbin here by Kerbin's gravity, our speed is increasing, 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 increasing. The highest point of our speed will be at the lowest point of our orbit, which is still set at 26 kilometers above the surface. Nice thick part of the atmosphere. Everything is hunky dory. What is this? Oh, yeah, science from space around Kerbin. That's very good. Um, we actually do have antenna data here. We could transmit some of it, but we'll get most of it if we bring it home. I guess what I, I could do at this point, assuming my solar panels were pointing correctly, and they are, is I could review all of our science, just in case something horrible happens. It's a good idea. In case something horrible happens, what I'm going to say is we're going to review this pointing a little bit more so that we've got probably higher solar panel efficiency around there. Uh, you can review the data and anything that transmits for full. So I'm going to keep you, keep you, keep you. You transmit for full. So let's go ahead and do that. Right. I can, hold on. Never mind. I can receive, but I can't transmit. I literally have no antenna. So even though I've got a signal, that's the reception signal. That would have to do with like probe steering or something like that. Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, time warp some more. I'm going to ditch the rest of my ship soon, but not quite yet. Oh yeah, we're not showing any of that down. And um, nearly there. Ooh, nice and dark. I think it's probably a fine time for me to ditch this stuff. So we lose, we're gonna lose the Science Junior, we're gonna lose the goo, but we collected all that. We're gonna lose our side engines. We have a bit of liquid fuel that we could use to, you know, kill a little delta, or a little bit of speed, but hardly anything. So I don't think it's worth fiddling around with. So yeah, let's do it. Um, and one interesting, Thing to test will be once we enter here. If I lock myself to retrograde, is this still going to drain my batteries? Not so far, which is nice to see. I did the quick save there. I'm going to test this. I want to find out if this is going to drain my batteries. So if it does, and all of a sudden I lose all steering authority, then I will be reverting from that. But it looks like it has changed at this point. Normally, um, whoa, stop, stop, stop. What am I doing with the freaking time warp? Didn't I learn my lesson last time? Is this my inner capsule that's complaining about the temperature? Maybe. Okay, it's not going up there. Whoa. Uh, camera. Camera, settle down. Okay. I mean, we're fine. That wasn't actually my ship. Yeah, it looks like the um, insano draining of electric charge while holding retrograde on reentry is mostly gone. Although, again, this is a relatively um, uh, aerodynamically stable design, right? If I turn off the SAS and any steering whatsoever, it should still keep its rear end going forward. It's mostly something that comes up if you've got a longer ship where the center of gravity and your aerodynamic design is not quite um, auto-correcting. But still, I think even with this, the electric charge previous to 1.2 would drain like crazy. I know they tweaked the SAS system. Just basically, the, probably the PID controller got retuned a little bit um, because it was just working too hard and too crazy and tended to be wobbly. And you just tune the, uh, the number a little bit better for that. MacJeb was always a much better uh, tool for locking yourself prograde or retrograde in atmospheric flight um, because it didn't go crazy and it didn't like use your reaction wheels at 100% all the time. It just used them slightly smarter. That's all. I, I, uh, you can do the same thing in KOS and program your own as well. So that went really well. We still have uh, three quarters of our blader left. Our speed is no longer ridiculous. We only have one parachute, but that should be plenty for this particular canister. I'm not worried about that at all. And yeah, our power is good. And it's not like we're getting solar panel power or anything like that. So wonderful wonderful i am going to go and risk the time support time warp here because i'm a nutter back in speed is good parachute is good so what i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to go ahead and drop the parachute we have successfully returned home we're not going to have any problems whatsoever we're landing in the ocean which is quite nice so i will put in a cut here and next episode well we'll probably have a ton of science to spend thank you very much for watching folks i'll see you guys